I think we're filming now. Yes, we are. Boys, I want to show you the bag that mommy's going to use today. What is it? What is it? I'll show you. Meow? No, <laughs> not the meow bag. Uh, oh, my God. What do you see? Um, Snoopy and Charlie Brown and the Woodstock. Charlie Brown and Snoopy. It's from Charlie Brown's Christmas. You like that show? Yeah. Yeah. Are they dressed up for winter or summer? Winter. Yeah, they're dressed up for the cold weather. Are we dressed up for the cold weather today? Yeah. Yeah, we are. Is that fun? Where's my shoes? Oh, where's your shoes? Believe me, we'll put them on before we go. What does Charlie Brown say when he gets aggravated? I don't know. Yeah. Good grief. Good grief. Yeah, he says good grief. Isn't that funny? Yeah. I say, oh, brother. Yeah, I do too sometimes. Where are we going today? The zoo. The zoo. Who are we going to see at the zoo today? Santa Claus. Santa Claus. But I got a tummy ache. I'm sure Santa will still say hi even if you have a tummy ache. dedicated to this the peanuts charlie brown christmas and all things related to that if you're new here it's a little bit complicated uh, i'll make the story quick is that this is my advent calendar the teas are delicious but the tea started repeating after five days and i was like nope can't do that so i'm reading the affirmations but i've got other teas to taste Okay, yeah, this one made me smile. Expect nothing, appreciate everything. <laughs> this one caught me off guard, but it sure did bring a smile to my face when I, re when I read it. I, think, um, it's, I like these. I like the affirmations. Okay, now for the tea. Let's see what we've got for today. Ooh. All right, let's try white orange spice. Oh my gosh. That smells exactly like, would you know, sometimes when I go to the, um, like the holiday craft fair, I'm thinking especially when I lived um, in Hungary and I would go into Budapest to the Christmas markets and they would have these, oh my goodness, like these beautiful Christmas wreaths made with like dried fruit and orange rinds. Oh, they were so fragrant and um, that's what the smell reminds me of. Oh my gosh, boy, does that take me back. The smell of those um, in the, the stalls, you know, with the vendors, and the, the smell of the mulled wine, uh, just like thro uh, floating through the air. And I've been back to visit several times, so it's really great. So if you follow Coach, you know that they released a Peanuts collaboration, and this is one of the bags that came out. This is the Heritage Crossbody. This was a bag that I was unfamiliar with. This is from the outlet. I did an unboxing. I will link that video below. If you'd like to know more information, check out that unboxing because I show you the comparison to like the regular Heritage that they have at the outlet. So here's a view of the bag. This is a pocket in the front, and this is where I keep my phone. As you can see, when the bag is full, it does bulge out. Like you could probably see the outline of my phone along here. A thin profile bag no pockets or anything on the back and here's the bottom it does come with this little fun pouch you can put inside the bag or here on the outside of the bag so here's what it looks like inside i've got a pair of sunnies on the top a little mini skinny skinny mini and my regular wallet here and a pack of wet ones and then my key fob down there on the bottom 
All right, and then inside it's just black fabric, no pockets with the coach patch there on the back. I consider this to be kind of a, like a semi-structured bag because it is pretty flexible. Like you can easily like squish it and move it like this, but it still has some structure to it. So I think semi-structured is the best way to describe it. I really like the gunmetal hardware and I like the strap that it's wide. Um, it is like a nylon strap. This is a dark, dark, like hunter green color. Yeah, I'm really glad I got this bag, even though at first I thought I wouldn't because the the Coach Peanuts are kind of special. To, I watch it with my boys. We have the DVD and we've been watching it here. I'm just surprised at how much they pay attention to this because um, like a lot of the jokes are pretty sophisticated or sarcastic. And I can't say that they actually get all those jokes, but they really pay attention. And that's odd for five-year-olds. And their second favorite is this, I want a dog for Christmas, Charlie Brown. So yeah, so we've been watching both of these and it's just a family favorite. A few things that I learned about the the show, a Charlie Brown's Christmas that I thought maybe some of you already know, but if you didn't know, you might find these things interesting. Well, here in the CVD, they have like a, you know, an extra track where they give some like background information about the show. And also I found some information online to refer to. The general idea is that this show came to be very quickly. I think they had a, a what they had planned air was canceled or it, it wasn't going to happen. And so they were working with the producer of this Charlie Brown show who uh, was asked like, do you have something you might be able to put in a spot? And he said, Lee Mendelssohn said, yeah, sure we do. <laughs> Knowing they had nothing actually at the time. And Mendelssohn lied saying, of course we have something. He was told, okay, let, let's see what you have in four days. So then this Mendelssohn called uh, Charles Schultz and said, I just sold a Charlie Brown Christmas. And Schultz asked, what's that? And Mendelssohn said, that's the new show you and I have to come up with this weekend. <laughs> and so they did it. You know, and sometimes like uh, I've heard other stories of like great things that have happened because when you're in a pinch, you just say you'll do it. And then later you figure out, okay, how am I going to do this? When you're presented an opportunity, you just jump at it. And then later you figure out how you're going to make the details work. So this is obviously an example of that. When the first draft or the first completed special uh, was presented to uh, CBS, supposedly the um, executives did not like it. Their major complaints were that the pace was too slow they didn't appreciate the jazz and that the animation was too simple, but the special had to, to air because of the short timeline. CBS had already scheduled it and had already promoted it. E. Mendelssohn, the producer, is quoted as saying, I really believe that if it wasn't already scheduled to air the following week, there was no way they were ever going to broadcast that special. <laughs> so the quick timing definitely worked in their favor. Those things that they were complaining about is what made it so legendary is that the pacing was different and that it did have jazz music. Um, and one of the other uh, special things about it, they used real kids to deliver those lines. So yeah, it made it really special. So this show didn't do many of the things that other shows did in the 60s, uh, such as not using laugh tracks and using real children's voices for the character voices instead of adults imitating children's voices. And maybe that's another reason that my boys are so drawn to it because of the authenticity. And then the producer, Lee Mendelssohn, wrote the lyrics for Christmas Time Is Here and his son, Glenn, along with his then sixth grade class, sang the vocals. That is so cool. That is super cool. When viewing the rough cut of the show, the producers were convinced they had a flop on their hands. After it premiered, they were happily surprised and shocked at the high ratings, high ratings and excellent reviews that it received. Today, the show remains the second longest running Christmas special on U.S. network television, only topped by 1964 Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Apple bought the rights to the peanut special in 2020. And therefore, in 2020 was supposed to be the first year that this show did not air on TV. But from what I'm reading here, there was an outcry from the public. So then the show was then put back on the television schedule in uh, November and December of 2020, sponsored by Apple. <laughs> so the Charlie Brown's Christmas won an Emmy for Outstanding Children's Programming in 1966, one year later. 
Charles Schultz was uh, pushed forward to give the speech and he simply said, Charlie Brown's not used to winning, so we thank you. So anyway, so there's some fun fun facts and some and some trivia went against mainstream at the time and that just proved to be so popular and amazingly still popular to this day. Mm. And this is great. I love this tea. I really love this tea. I know it won't be for everyone, but I guess because of my memories, I don't know. It's surprisingly tied up there with the gingerbread one from way back. Like, because I, I was like, I don't like gingerbread, but I loved that tea. This one is, is perhaps now my new favorite, or it could be a close tie. Anyway, I, lo I love it. Thank you for coming with us to the zoo and thanks for letting me talk about this Charlie Brown Christmas and I just really enjoy talking about the Charlie Brown Christmas and the story behind that show. You all take care and I will see you here next time. Thanks so much. Bye.